The measure of a man is what he does with power. Power doesn't change who you are, it reveals who you are. When you are given authority, influence, or control, it is a test of your character. Will you use that power for good, to uplift others, to create positive change, or will you use it for selfish gain? The true measure of a person lies not in what they say or believe, but in what they do when they hold power. Power is a responsibility, a burden, and a privilege. It is a tool that can either build or destroy, depending on how it is wielded. So, if you are ever in a position of power, remember that your actions define you, and your legacy will be shaped by how you use that power. Imagine a leader who has gained the trust of the people, who holds the fate of many in their hands. How they choose to act with that power will determine not only their own destiny, but the destiny of those who follow them. Will they lead with wisdom and compassion, or will they succumb to the temptations of power, allowing it to corrupt and degrade their moral compass? History is filled with examples of both, and the lessons are clear. Power must be handled with care, with a deep sense of responsibility, and with the understanding that it is not an end in itself, but a means to serve others. Wise men speak because they have something to say, fools because they have to say something. In a world filled with noise, it's easy to forget the value of silence. Not every thought needs to be spoken. Not every opinion needs to be voiced. The wise understand this they speak when they have something meaningful to contribute, when their words can bring clarity, insight, or comfort. Fools, on the other hand, speak simply to fill the silence, to hear their own voices without consideration of the impact or value of their words. The art of conversation is not merely about speaking, but about listening, understanding, and responding with thoughtfulness. In your interactions, strive to be a wise speaker. Think before you speak, consider the weight of your words, and choose to speak only when you can add something of value to the conversation. Words are powerful. They can heal or hurt, build up or tear down. Use them wisely. The wisdom in knowing when to speak and when to remain silent is a rare and valuable skill. It requires self-discipline a deep understanding of oneself and a genuine concern for the impacts of one's words on others. The world would be a more peaceful place if more people practiced this principle, choosing their words carefully and speaking only when they have something truly meaningful to say. Courage is knowing what not to fear. Fear is a natural response to the unknown, to danger, to uncertainty. But true courage isn't the absence of fear. It's understanding what truly deserves your fear and what does not. It's about discerning between real threats and imagined ones, between what you can control and what you cannot. Courage is standing firm in the face of adversity, not because you are fearless, but because you have learned to master your fear. Life is filled with challenges and obstacles that can create fear. The fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of the unknown, all of these can paralyze us and prevent us from taking action. But courage is not about eliminating fear. It's about recognizing it, understanding it, 
and moving forward despite it. It's about knowing that some fears are irrational and should not dictate our actions, while others require us to be cautious and prepared. When you know what not to fear, you are free to take risks, to pursue your dreams, to live fully and boldly. This understanding allows you to face life's challenges with confidence, knowing that you have the inner strength to overcome them. Courage is not a lack of fear. It is the ability to act in spite of it, to choose bravery over fear, and to live a life that is true to yourself. Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. You never know the struggles that others are going through. Behind every smile, every calm exterior, there may be pain, loss, or hardship. This is why kindness is so important. A simple act of kindness, a word of encouragement, a gesture of compassion, these can make all the difference in someone's life. Kindness is a universal language that transcends barriers, cultures, and differences. It connects us as human beings, reminding us of our shared experiences and our common humanity. In a world that can often be harsh and unforgiving, kindness is a beacon of hope, a reminder that there is good in the world and that we can all contribute to it. Kindness costs you nothing, but it can mean everything to someone else. It is the foundation of human connection, the glue that holds communities together, the light that shines in the darkest of times. In your interactions with others, choose kindness. It is a powerful force for good, and it is something we all need especially in a world that can often be harsh and unforgiving. The ripple effect of kindness is profound. A small act of kindness can inspire others to do the same, creating a chain reaction that spreads positivity and compassion. It's a simple yet powerful way to make the world a better place, one person at a time. Remember, Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. So be kind, always. The greatest wealth is to live content with little. In a world that often equates wealth with material possessions, it's easy to forget that true wealth lies in contentment. It's not about how much you have, but how much you appreciate what you have. Contentment is the key to happiness, to peace of mind, to a life well lived. It's about finding joy in the simple things, in the relationships you cherish, in the experiences that enrich your life. When you live content with little, you free yourself from the endless pursuit of more, from the stress and anxiety of keeping up with others. You discover that the greatest riches are found within, in your heart, in your soul, in the love and connections you build with others. Seek contentment and you will find that you are richer than you ever imagined. In today's society, where consumerism and materialism often take center stage, the wisdom of contentment is more relevant than ever. The constant pursuit of more can lead to a never-ending cycle of dissatisfaction where no amount of wealth or possessions can bring true happiness. But when you learn to appreciate what you have, to find joy in the simple pleasures of life, you unlock a sense of peace and fulfillment that money cannot buy. Contentment is not about settling for less. It's about recognizing that you already have enough. It's about understanding that true wealth 
is not measured by the size of your bank account or the number of possessions you own, but by the quality of your relationships, the depth of your experiences, and the richness of your inner life. When you live content with little, you are free to focus on what truly matters, to live a life of purpose, and to find joy in the everyday moments that make life meaningful.